As we talk to IT professionals, one of the areas they're struggling with is data protection, and that data protection problem is really being driven by the hardware itself to a large degree, and then it's really kind of old school in that we have dual control architectures, and you know, Don, what you see there is you'll add shelves of capacity, and of course, this capacity is obviously growing in the data centers, which is no surprise to anybody, uh, and then when you hit this wall, all of a sudden, now you got to buy another one, and now you got a whole other point of management, right? So you've got a capacity problem, first off, right off the bat, and now we're asking data protection stores to do a lot more, right? So we're talking right. about uh, live recovery or instant recovery, depending on who you are. Uh, and then we're also talking about um, things like copy data uh, services, things like that. Yep. So those really become a problem, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. And actually, it doesn't just stop there, right? I mean, you also, if you want, you want to go beyond that, you can also think about the analytics right. um, that you might want to also tie into this and how do I understand how can I uh, you know, piece different data sets together? And then also beyond that, and I'll just say simply, what about on the use side? How do I use this data smartly? kind of along the lines of the copy data plays right. um, in a way that I can get the most out of the secondary copies. Right. So, right. so I think one of the challenges now is what do we do? How do we fix this model? Yeah. So I mean, if you kind of look at this model, and most of it's traditional through some of your purpose-built uh, backup appliances, mm -hmm. what they've done is they've gone very deep. And they've gone deep in hoping they can ingest as much data as possible into the actual appliance itself. Uh, but the challenge, as you stated, from a scale perspective capacity, if you want to make these highly available in multiple locations, you have to buy multiples. Right. And of course, it also restricts them on performance because you scale deep, you right. don't really get the levels of linear performance that you'd hope to start doing things like live recovery, copy management. Exactly. So those become challenges. So a lot of the ways that you can think about changing this, and this is actually something at Commvault that we've developed with Commvault Hyperscale software, We've actually allowed customers to take some of that commodity storage and server gear mm -hmm. and scale linearly, linearly based upon the capacity and the performance metrics they need. So more of a scale out model. Correct. So instead of scaling down, essentially just go out and find the servers that you want that meet the actual storage and compute mechanisms that fit the needs of your protection, your disaster recovery, your live recovery mechanisms. And as you scale, it's just simply add more of these server nodes that ultimately automatically configure themselves, apply themselves into the ultimate grid mm -hmm. of uh, storage nodes that we have available. And now instead of just having compute at the top on controllers with a whole lot of storage below, we're actually linearly scaling compute and storage in a very linear line. So that if you need more IOPS for doing copy data services, for live recovery, if you want to extend this for more than just backup using those secondary copies, mm -hmm. um, really for more business or IT use cases, well, you've got that linear scale. And the great thing about this, we talk about new technologies like uh, erasure coding. Mm -hmm. you know, getting rid of the idea of RAID cards and controller sure. cards, and just let the storage do its thing, right. and let true software definition drive how data is available. Sure. Well, with Commvault Hyperscale software, we've applied that same level of erasure coding. Okay. So you've got basically the failover capabilities that a RAID controller would do, but in a software sense that spans multiple servers, multiple sets of storage, to give you that level of performance that you need. And I think all of this becomes critical, especially if you start thinking about uh, stuff like uh, live or rapid recoveries, right, where you've got to, now you could be running production data for at least over a period of time on the system. Oh, so absolutely. all that becomes really important. Absolutely. And remember, too, right, you can build this. I mean, this is built for petabyte scale plus, right? Okay. So not one petabyte, but tens of petabytes. And ultimately, if you if you had the need to go to hundreds of petabytes, you could have multiples of a, of a couple of these massively uh, built out grids to provide the level of uh, performance at the cost that you want, because this is just commodity gear, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, and then also um, with the scale that you need, because as you grow it, it automatically essentially is, is assimilated mm -hmm. and figures, you know, understands how the performance should, should scan across all of them. Okay. So you get that capacity that you need. It's going to, with the Commvault data platform, right, so that's underlined by everything that the uh, the Commvault data platform itself does. So an important point there, this, this your software actually runs on these nodes. Correct. Right? Yeah. So, so I don't have to go out and buy like a backup server, it's all right there. And that's the great part, right? Yeah. yeah, you've got a Linux server here that basically runs and grids all of these guys together so that essentially all of the storage itself is auto-configured, the operating environment is auto-configured, even the different Commvault services that you choose to use mm -hmm. to back up uh, VM environments, back up cloud environments, link this out to the cloud so you can extend your services needs. That's all built in as a part of the Commvault data platform that gotcha. overlays on this gear. Okay. So you get your live recovery, you have your copy data needs, and even better is the use use cases, the analytic use cases, all fold directly into how we can start then leveraging this data, aggregating it for different business needs, attaching it to big data use cases, 
you know, attaching it to search use cases. Obviously, GDPR is about, what, three quarters of a year away, right? Yep. Another huge reason why customers are looking at this direction, because the scale of data they need, they need to make sure they can assign those same business policies and understand what type of risk are they at yep. and how can they use it smarter. Yeah, and like the GDBR use case is a really good example because then we're going to need indexing and things like that. I know you guys have that capability, but to be able to scale that becomes really critical, right? Absolutely, and again, those are all components that you can enable within the Commvault data platform itself. So having a scalable infrastructure that drives those secondary copies really is first and foremost for hyperscaling the data protection needs, changing up this way of scaling deep Provide that same level of deep, um, uh, deep support for storing information, but do it in a way that also linearly scales out. So you've got the performance metrics you need to drive the live and, and instant access. And then uh, from a hardware perspective here, you, you guys like aren't aggressively getting in the hardware. You, you got, you're giving people options as far as what they can use as nodes? Yeah, absolutely. So again, at the end of the day, we are a software company. And mm -hmm. Commvault Hyperscale software can work really across any number of um, uh, server and storage sort of, sort of types. Okay. So when we work with Cisco, we work with HP. Um, there's even a, a number of other vendors that we can work with as well that we're certifying. I think there's a number of about six or seven okay. um, that allow us to do that. And then, of course, we're also looking at how do we appliance that for our customers as well. That makes sense. Okay. Well, Don, thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, George.